Good morning. Joshua Esnard was born in St. Lucia. It's where he grew up. And he talks about when he was a child growing up, how in St. Lucia, very few people go to a barber. I mean, people just really can't afford it. And so typically you cut your own hair or someone in your family cuts it. And that was the case for him as a child growing up. His father cut their hair, but he said, my dad only knew one cut to give, and that was a buzz cut. He said, I hated it. He hated it. Till finally he was 13 years old. And at 13 years old, he thought, I'm done with my father giving me a buzz cut. But trying to cut your own hair, that was really tough. He tried it, and it really made a mess out of his haircut. So he came up with an idea. He got a piece of plastic and kind of created a, a, a template, some sort of a um, stencil that he could put on his head and then use the shears and it would make the cut go better. It actually worked incredibly well. He could put it up and do a, a trim for the different hairline and, and the sides of his hair. He could trim it. it, it worked very well for him. Well, he did that for years. It went right on for 15 years, 15 years. By now he was married and one day he was doing a chore and he got tired of it and just kind of quit. It was his wife who said to him, Joshua, you never finish anything that you start. Well, that really hit him. It wasn't just the fact he wasn't finishing the chores. He really thought about how he had talked about trying to sell what he called his cut buddy for years but he'd never gotten around to it. He had looked into it, thought about it, but he hadn't seen it through. And that day, the words of his wife spoke into his heart and he thought, I've got to do this. So he decided to go out and get a patent. Had to spend what little bit of money he had, he managed to get a patent. And now he had to try to start marketing it. But how do you market it? Again, he had to push himself to say, I'm gonna see this through. He decided to create his own YouTube commercials. And so he started kind of dancing around, having a little jazz. He had his cut buddy. He'd put it up on his head and show how you could try to trim. The problem was, as he was doing these commercials, he was going bald. He was now losing his hair. And he's trying to tell everybody how great a cut buddy is for cutting your hair. Well, he got all kinds of jokes always coming back because of these commercials and the way that he was going bald. He was selling somewhere between three and five cut buddies a day. It was a little bit, but it sure wasn't anything to write home about. So he got to thinking about it and finally decided, you know, I need to turn to influencers. People on YouTube who influence others and will take your product and you can give them a, a, a cut. He said, I'll give you 10% of all the sales and I'll give you a coupon so whoever buys it through you gets 10% off if you'll cut some YouTube videos and influence others. Well, some of you had people with hair who were advertising his cut buddy device, how to trim your hair, how to trim your beard, and it started going. One of the influencers put together a YouTube commercial that went viral, and suddenly in one hour, his phone started lighting up and he sold several thousand cut buddies in an hour. Well, that was the beginning. He and his wife started working so hard, they were having a hard time keeping up with all the demands for Cut Buddy that was coming in. Then came along the pandemic. And of course, what happened in the pandemic? Everybody needed to stay home and have their hair cut. You hated going out somewhere. So sales for Cut Buddy started going higher. He'd gotten on Shark Tank. He'd gotten a $300,000 investment from one of the partners. No, Cut Buddy is now licensed. It is sold in Walmarts across the nation. It's in all kinds of stores. And now Joshua and his wife really don't package them up and send them out or cut commercials. No, they just kind of collect the checks. He's done incredible. He's done incredible. And what is he doing with his success? He's been looking around to communities and he's gotten very involved in working with communities that really are underprivileged and has been stepping in to try to help other young kids, to give them a vision, teach them how to be entrepreneurs, how to have a job, how to have a future. No, he's gotten very involved in his communities because he said, you know, 
I've been very blessed and I am grateful. And now it's time to pay it forward and to give back. Maybe today we ought to stop and think about how we all have been blessed. And maybe it's time for us all to be thankful, to pay it forward, and to give back. Have a great day.